Hello Ed Explorers, thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another exciting and informative video on our YouTube channel. If you are joining us for the first time, we want to thank you for watching. In this episode, we shall be going back into the domino effect in the continent of Africa and how this has embarrassed Paris. We shall explore specifics here, look into historical information and bring to you as the reason why France still think we are still in the 1970s. I will encourage you to watch this video to the end because we're going to discuss it like you have never before seen. So without any much delay, let's just dive straight into it. As events in the continent of Africa continue to unfold, specifically in West Africa, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger and currently in Gabon and more importantly in the country of Guinea that embarrasses France in several ways. This particular episode we shall be looking at some specifics here. What the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, called an epidemic of coup in Francophone Africa is spreading. Not since the Arab Spring have Paris and other Western capitals seemed to overtaken by events as a string of supposedly stable strong men, regimes fall at the hands of ambitious military officers, often cheered on by a new generation of disillusioned by unkept democratic promises. There is no easy fix, but a new approach is overdue. As we see events in the region, the significance of the latest domino to fall, President Ali Bongo in Gabon, in the fact that instability is spreading beyond the Sahel region, where a losing French back fight against jihad has angered locals, embroidered in the military to topple regimes in countries like Mali, Niger, and also giving inroads to Russia Wagner Group. The inability of the West or African regional blocs to reverse those power seizures probably fueled the urge to oust Bongo, whose family ruled Gabon for 55 years and for a long time was a key partner for Paris' interests in Africa, though had more recently pivoted to the Anglosphere. Looking ahead, what makes Gabon a particularly awkward development for Paris and France and its European allies who met most recently to examine response to the July 30th coup in Niger, which saw the unseating of President Mohamed Bassoum, including possible sanctions in that some dominoes are asking to be pushed further. If you look at what happened in Niger, it has awoken France and France continues to drag the relationship with Niger at the moment. The Bongos live in luxury, buoyed by Gabon's oil world, while one third of their people live on less than about seven US dollars a day. According to the World Bank, the cool proximate cause wasn't jihadist or French military engagement, but the start of what would have been Bongos' third term in power after a disputed general election. Part of a growing wave of third terminism in the African continent. The third terminism has brought a lot of issues in the region. If you consider Ivory Coast and other countries like Togo, looking at also in what will about happened in Senegal. Hopefully that's not gonna be happened so far as the president of Senegal has declared publicly that he's not gonna be running for the third term. Moving ahead. In a continent where the median age is 19 years old, but that of its leaders is about 63 years old. Hence, the celebration of Gabon Street of a post that is under democratic by definition but is seen as a liberation from autocratic rule. As in France, owns history, generals are profiting from political and economic chaos to seize power. According to Thierry Vercolun, an expert who works for IFRI, Considering his expertise in the region, who actually said military coups deter are in the solution, but we can't forget that just before this, Gabon held elections full of irregularities, said that expert based on his own knowledge on the ground. As we continue in this episode, all of which explains the ambiguous response to Gabon after Niger's Paris condemning the coup, why Biden administration had asked the junta to preserve civilians' rule or the confusion about when the dominoes will stop falling. More African leaders are going to look nervously over the next couple of months and years. Cameroon's 90-year-old president, Paul Bia, who has been in power since 1982, on Thursday most recently appointed new heads of departments. Senegal, whose president recently ruled out a third term, 
holds election next year. There is a real feeling of contagion. Stéphane Gamspert, the French Foreign Ministry former Director of Africa, said, the combination of an embroiled military and exhausted regime is hardly rare. The response will require a deft diplomatic torch that has been missing so far, as reactions to Niger range from fierce threat of military intervention to an unwillingness to call a coup a coup. The focus on the military building in the Sahel region and also the tendency towards that business as usual is not going to be the same again, with autocratic leaders having seen France lose influence and credibility, while a bigger power struggle between the West and China and Russia plays out on a continent where natural resources are abundant. Moving ahead, a better balance might be between targeted sanctions that don't punish civilians. For example, in 2011, when Europe imposed restrictions on the Ivory Coast Bagbos regime and a more convincing push to promote democratic transition towards pluralism and viable political opposition. If you are new to this channel, we encourage you to check some of our informative videos about the continent of Africa. We encourage you to support this channel because sometimes some of the videos that we produce on this channel do not get the actual views and likes as a result of the critical topics that we are looking at that affects the life of the African people and the growth and the trajectory of the African continent entirely. So we deep down into our research for you to motivate us and encourage us to continue to produce exciting research-based content. We encourage you to share our videos and to let us know that we are making a huge impact to your own understanding and to the geopolitics in the region. So let's jump back into the video. want to thank you for that like. Macron has gambled, tried to brush away the cowboys of old-school France Afrique paternalism and with a pledge to cut through numbers and forge a more equal trading relationship with the continent of Africa and more. Earlier this week, as regards to his own opinion, Macron told a diplomatic corps, we still tend to speak only to Africa's capital and those in power. We need to re-engage with civil society, with those in opposition. A fine sentiment, but it may be too late. France is playing a game too late. There is no option for France at the moment. The people of Africa has risen and they have sent a strong message to France that it's not going to be business as usual. France has ruled these particular regions indirectly from their monetary policy, their economic affairs, their political life, interference and also used the French language in one way or the other to impair the growth and development of those particular regions. And if you consider the amount of money that the African countries have to combine and also give to France, if you look at the colonial pack, if you want to believe that this relationship will continue as usual, then you are mistaken. France has impoverished those countries. At the moment, what we see is not new. It's been in the background for several years. And at the moment, France will feel the pressure as the competition grows in the region of Africa. You do have the United States on the ground. You have China. You have Russia. We shall be looking on how this plays out. But in fact, France is not going to have that influence that it had many years ago. And France has lost it. They are here illegally. A verbal jab at the French armed forces. Speaking to the press. Niger's junta appointed prime minister didn't hold back about the country's former colonial power. France's ambassador was also called out for refusing to meet with coup leaders. It's a behavior of contempt. It's not acceptable. So the measures that need to be taken against a diplomat who fails in his duty have been taken. We simply expect this invalid partner to leave our country as soon as possible. Sylvain Ite is now persona non grata, and the junta say they've also contacted France's military for a swift withdrawal. Anti-French sentiment has been widely shared on the streets of Niamey. For several days now, thousands have been demonstrating in front of the Nigerian army base, where some 1,500 French soldiers are deployed. I just want the French to leave our territory. We don't need them. Yesterday the resistance continued, today you are witnesses and continues. It will continue tomorrow, it will continue the day after tomorrow, it will continue forever until these idiots leave. Tensions have risen since July 26th, when President Mohamed Bazoum was overthrown. France has remained firm, refusing to recognize the Putschists. 
the Junta for its part though, has called for continued cooperation with France. It's also hopeful of reaching an agreement with ECOWAS in the next few days, but at the same time, the bloc has imposed heavy economic sanctions on Niger, while frequently threatening armed intervention. We expect to be attacked at any moment. All the necessary measures have been taken so that we can defend ourselves. In response to a possible threat, Niger closed its airspace on August 6th, reopening once again on Monday. Hopefully we've informed you with regards to the current situation in the region and why the domino effect in West Africa has embarrassed France to an extent that Elysee is beginning to think what went wrong. We want to thank you for watching. If you are new to this channel, we encourage you to subscribe, share our videos as we're looking forward to meeting you in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.